Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome all around the world to the Celtic and Under Weekend Review. Uh, my name is Anthony McGuire, and this week I'm joined by a special guest and longtime <laughs> host of the Weekend Review, Sean Connolly. How you doing, mate? Good, man. Yeah, been a uh, pretty hectic, to be totally honest with you. Uh, I'm just getting a yeah, I've been pretty busy with work, life, all sorts of stuff. So. I had to take a bit of a break from it. Um, honestly, I just create chaos, try to, get this house, try to build a house with BGC. I would not wish it on my worst enemy, uh, this experience. And just pretty busy at work as well. But apart from that, uh, everything else is pretty good. Kids well, great, it's, family's good. It's good to have you back on tonight. Just when you thought you were out, we dragged you back in. Um, <laughs> we're going to discuss Celtic 4, Livingston 2, Scottish Cup, sixth round. Apparently, we can't call it a quarter final, but um, whatever, mm. whatever you want to call it. Um, so we'll drag into that in a minute. I, I told you last week I was going to meet my um little uh, nephew for the first time on the weekend, so I got to do that. I got to hold little Jack, fantastic. Um, mum and dad, everyone doing it really, really well, so that was fantastic. And then did the long drive back up from Bustleton back up to Perth yesterday, and then was had the matchsticks <coughs> in my uh, in my eyelids to stay awake till half past ten until kickoff for uh, for the cup game. So, Sean, obviously the news leading into the game was that uh, Cameron Carter Richards uh, didn't make the didn't make the squad, didn't make the team, didn't make the squad at all due to hamstring soreness the day before um and then the obvious other exclusion was yang on the basis of a two-match suspension uh his appeal uh being upheld uh not being up, oh, yeah appeal so being rejected yeah, suspension. being rejected yes yeah, so I, I got myself modeled up there so yeah so um so basically he has to serve a two-match ban first of which um obviously on the weekend just gone so been a while since you've obviously been on, Sean. So how about you just give us a wee bit of a thought? So just how you're feeling Celtic are actually traveling at the moment, because it's good to get mm. a fresh take, because you know obviously I've been banging the drum for a while. Um so give us a give us your take and then yeah, just give us your take on the actual match day squad and team that, that lined up against Livingston. Yeah, I mean, we've had a few false dawns, haven't we? A few things where we feel that we're turning the corner. Uh Adamida is a striker now, and uh, you know, uh Yang is a player now and <laughs> then he has a stinker yesterday and Yang suspended for two games after he was uh, hardly covering himself in glory anyway Matt Riley said, we're just so up and down uh, as a team and a squad uh, I, after I wasn't on here obviously but after we drew it home with Kilmarnock I basically conceded the, the league at that point, not because two points is insurmountable but because um, with whatever games it was left at the time, 12, I can't remember to be honest, somewhere between 10 and 12 games left and yeah, I couldn't really see us winning more than uh, like seventy percent of those. So like it was more just that I couldn't project that we were going to create the kind of form that we that we need to to win the league. Uh, couldn't match the the form of the the other team in Glasgow, and uh, not referring to Queens Park or Partick Thistle. Uh, and even tactically, we've been kind of just chopping and changing tactically as well as chopping and changing players like. Um, I can't remember how the team we were playing a few weeks ago now, and the the kind of way the game was panning out, there was just a lot of it. It was Kyogo and Ida up front together, and there was a lot of direct balls into feet up front, and it seemed like that was we were trying to change to that tactic with the two up front and uh, direct to feet, which is a thing a feature we had a lot under Neil Lennon uh, and his two striker system. You see a lot with Stokes, Hooper, Griffiths, those sort of players, even Edward and Griffiths towards the end of the. Uh, when the COVID cancelled season, and I thought, okay, this is what we're doing. And then, like, in the next game, we're on to actually, no, we're now playing the fullbacks are going to be crossing from the corner of the 18 yard box. And okay, we get some success from that against Motherwell, and then roll around Livingston, and now we're hitting the byline. Uh, so, so I'm not really sure, like, there's no real consistency to, to what our attacking play is, and the defense is the. I don't know, man. Like, I know there's we'll, a lot of we'll, we're, 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 we're going to we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into the defense, but um, but mm -hmm. no, I, t I totally take your point there, Sean, because you're right. I mean, the, every week it seems to be a different tactic. Um, mm -hmm. and it's sort of like spin the wheel, and what we're going to do this week? Oh, we're going to have overlapping fullbacks this week, because mm -hmm. um, there was quite a lot of one twos played, which actually obviously brought us some success to our goals 
on the weekend. But like you say, you're right. The weekend before that, it was shallow crossing from, like you say, from that 18-yard line. And then, yeah, I'm trying I'm trying the game as well where we had the two up top and it, it got very it direct. Home game. Like, it may have been the Kamara game, I don't remember. It might have been. And even even then you're sort of thinking, well, that's almost like Dembele, like, like either playing like Dembele and trying to link the play up and then, you know, and then Hilda sort of, sort of playing, sitting off that. And, you know, I think, well, all right, maybe that could work. And I'm a really strong proponent of having your best players on the park. And if you haven't got McGregor, and you haven't got Cameron Carter Vickers available to you, then can we really afford to have Kyogre sitting on the bench? Um, I'd still be figuring out a way to try and get him on the park at the same time. I'm not diminishing Ida's contribution. I, he's had a, had a massive contribution, but I just think that you just can't afford to have your top goal scorer sitting on the sitting on the bench waiting to come on. Um, because I, 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 yeah, I. We'll, we'll come back to it, but um, so obviously the two omissions were from from the weekend were obviously CCV and um, and Yang, and obviously you know there's music around the fact that Cal McGregor might be out for longer than the international break. We obviously it's all rumor and speculation. We don't know about that, but obviously his presence is is sorely missed. And Brendan Rogers was very quick to mention that in his in his post match. But um, but what, how were you feeling going into the game? So obviously Livingston are no great shakes. The bottom of the league, they're struggling. He had to make Martindale had to make five changes just basically through injury. Um, so he, he had to cobble together a, a team he put in the park. But then you're just thinking, well, they've got nothing to lose. Um, so like you're thinking, well, you know, if they're ever going to get a result against us, I mean, no bigger as time as any. Because like you say, we've been so blue and hot and cold a lot. Um, what were you what were you feeling? What was your what was your gut gut feeling sort of leading into the game? Well, when I seen the lineup, the red flag for me was the front three, uh, particularly Kuhn and Maeda, which was quite uh, came back to be a, a delightful irony in the sense that those two were the best players on the pitch, and and I think to be honest, a large part of that was down to the absolute ineptitude of the the Livingston fullbacks. Uh, well, I say the, the right back, I forget his name. What, what uh, long, long bottom, Nottingham, long bottom, Nottingham, Nottingham, Nottingham. I'll, I'll come back to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah but whatever he was just. Just dread. Nottingham, like, Nottingham. Ma- yeah. Maeda was just doing whatever he wanted in terms of making runs in behind. Nottingham was just looking along, making sure he was in line with his teammates. No awareness whatsoever what Maeda was doing. No care of what Maeda was doing. And on the other side, I don't again don't remember what the Ma- Man Mantolo Montano whatever, Montano Montano yep. the guy that uh, Kuhn was up against. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the guys the Livingston Fowler team with six foot five players. Obviously, you're going to get outpaced by a little tricky speedy winger right so and he was doing it as much as he wanted and to be honest if if Kuhn had had I was going to blame Kuhn I actually don't think it was Kuhn's fault if there had been uh, I don't know some there was a few instances where it was like okay Kuhn that was a bad cutback you could have put that in the stride of either there was other times where it was like Kuhn was sitting in the byline and there was nobody available so it was a you know a little bit of column A a little bit of column B and then I think that's kind of indicative of uh where we are as a whole and even the thing i mentioned earlier about this chopping and changing tactics thing brendan rogers did that thing where he rolled the media in on whatever random tuesday and got the two screens of postacoglu and Red rogers and part of it is that postacoglu's team had the quality and the nous to to mix it up within a game rogers teams at the moment and if you're being kind to rogers you would say it's the, the quality of the players that can't switch up the tactics in a game and can't vary it. Uh, you know, they just need to choose the one thing and stick to it. And, and, but that's that seems to be what's happening. But and, and it worked. It worked yesterday in an attacking sense that Maida and Kuhn did rip them to pieces, but uh Ida was just ineffectual. The, there was the two chances. If you think to the first chance Ida has, where it's a ball over the top from a quick free kick, yeah. Kyogo hits that first time, chips the keeper, who shouldn't have came off the line, but did, and Ida... He didn't even think of it. Couldn't uh, Kyoga does it on instinct, right? It's, it's either a goal or it's a close, close miss. Ida lets it bounce, fluffs it, and and like nothing eventuates from it. And then what we find out from that moment is that the reason why he does third choice in Norwich and we're getting him on loan is that he's uh, a mentally fragile player. And and after that, he did, he did nothing. Like. He didn't touch the ball for the first 20 minutes, just the way the game was going, not his fault. Uh, yeah. And then he, the, but the first thing that does come to him, he, he makes a bad decision and has a bad touch. 
and then he's just out of the game after that. Nothing happens for him after that. Well, he had that. He had the header chance not long after that other chance, and you can see after he fluffed that one as well, his head went down. Um, mm-hmm. And then, yeah, you say, you know, at the moment he needs to be built up, and um, you know, some of the goals he's scored have been crackers, and they've just been instinctive, and it's been basically the first chance that sort of come to him. So obviously, then confidence player. Um, so it's a, a, a fair point that you're making. He's, he's fluffed a couple of chances, and then obviously you know gets on his own back um and then he obviously he made way around the 60 minute mark for um for Kyogo. um we are live um so if you've got any comments you want to shout out say hello um give us your thoughts on what happened yesterday um please feel free um i'll pop them up as they become relevant to the discussion so yeah please please get involved um we've got 32 of you that i can see online so um Yes, let us know what your thoughts are, because um, that's part of the reason why we do this. We like to <clears throat> like to hear from our viewers. Um, Sean, we might as well get touch on the first goal, because it only took six minutes for us to 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 get on the store sheet, which is a nice feeling, um, particularly when there's a danger of extra time, and a game that goes past sort of half half past midnight in Perth. So, you know, mm-hmm. the, the the daunting thought of extra time at two each was. <laughs> Was was giving me uh, was was giving me some sort of cause for concern, but thankfully early goal. Uh, Nicholas Kuhn, very bright star. Um, the the Stephen Craigan and uh, the other commentator, I can't remember his name, were um, were given, uh, but were given um, given a big like early doors. And in fairness, he he started brightly, had a chance by very early, and it was just a poor cutback, <clears throat> as you say. I think his quality of crossing. Um, is probably his biggest area of needing of improvement. And I think one of the Austrian journalists did say that his output, that final delivery ball, whatever, is probably his weakest aspect of his game. Um, He's still obviously cutting in a lot. um, But I guess the only thing he was mixing up with this time was with a bit of overlapping from um, Alistair Johnson, which did seem to complement and and obviously stretch Livingston, who were playing a... A back three, apparently, I, 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 I'm unclear. I don't think some of their players knew what they were meant to be doing. But um, as you say, but um, but Kuhn cuts inside and then puts picks out uh, Maeda a delightful sort of chip pass. Maeda willing runner, um, and you know actually makes it look relatively simple for a change because normally he stores the hard mm-hmm. ones and and misses the misses the easy ones. But he um, he had enough composure there to finish that one. Make it one 0 Um at that point, what were you thinking? And yeah, what would what you think of the goal? First one up. I think Maeda is actually does better when he's doing things on instinct, which is not to say his, his first touch is bad, right? It's generally his, his I think Didier Gat had a similar thing, right? Where if his first touch was great, he, he, he would just kill it. And then it was similar with Maeda. And um so when that comes in and it bounces up on onto his chest and it lands perfectly for him, it's like right instinctive finish he's pretty good at those sometimes and there was even one later on uh where he he gets on his left foot and again he's he's a very right-footed player but weirdly he crosses better with his left foot is it something to do i don't know if it's something to do with his body position or instinct i don't know what it is it's weird and anyway pings this left foot shot that the keeper has to claw away Uh, it it would have went in otherwise and and he had that defender on toast all day obviously and um and uh, you mentioned kuhn uh, and the crossing Again, in the first, I think it's in the first two minutes or something, first few minutes anyway, does yeah. that ball into his feet and yeah. the defender flat, can just go, I don't know what, like can just goes, right, I'm just going to let this run through my legs and just and turn. And I was like, okay, that's, and it's probably the same point we're making about Ida, but an opposite, that the first thing Kuhn does is amazing. And then he's just lights up the game after that. Like he knows that he's going to have a good day. Um, If that's, yeah, I mean, is this a, is this a dawn for Kuhn? Because like it's not. It's been very, very recent that we were saying that Yang should never see the field in a Celtic jersey again. Um, you that. know that game against I think it was St Mirren where he was caught yeah, offside like three times. Uh, there was the European game where he, he might as well have been in the stand. He was a man down. And then fast forward to February and we're all like, oh man, I can't believe Yang's suspended. We hope he's not going to miss Ibrox. And I was like, do you know what I mean? Like, is, is we now at that point with Kuhn? That where again, like a month ago, it was like 
this guy should how do we pay money for this guy oh my god he's on a five and a half year contract i can't believe we've been done here can we get our money back and now it's like man in a match well not quite because my got a hat trick but otherwise second best player on the pitch uh and this is it kun's a player now I'm not saying that. I don't think that. I think the Levy defence was the worst defence I've seen at Celtic Park this season. I think they were the worst team I've seen at Celtic Park this season. Uh, I think I think, I think, think what you're saying is very fair. I, I think against that opposition, I think most players would look decent. Um, mm-hmm. I still think his sharpness of movement showed flashes of what he is capable of. Um, but I, I think you could throw a hat like you throw all our wingers in a hat at the moment probably with the exception of Maeda I, I, I think Maeda is probably a, a step above what we've got I mean Maeda has his flaws and he will miss some easy chances and he missed some easy chances in that game he probably could have had five or six goals on a, you know if he was clinical but then if he was super clinical he wouldn't be playing for us um <laughs> but 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 take him out Yang Kuhn James Forrest. Um, what, other, what other wingers we got left? Is the bad is gone? Um, I'm trying to. Else. Obviously, Tilio's on loan, so he's he's out the picture. But you could probably throw them all in a hat, Sean, and you just pull them out on the day. And if they have a performance, they have a performance. But I, I just can't see any of them potentially holding down a spot to the end of the season. If you know what I mean, I think it's going to be a case of having to rotate through and horses for courses and sort of say, well, all right, against this matchup, who do we think, or Brendan Rodgers, what do you think, who's the best winner for this game? I, I just don't see any way that anyone's going to nail down that spot between now and the end of the season, just because... But that's fine, though. If the, if, there are, if the players that are coming in are on it, it doesn't matter. That's what Ange used to do, right? He'd have the players yeah. play 60... 60 30, 60 30, 60 30. Do you know what I mean? Like he would have them rotating yeah. like that. He did the same with the fullbacks as well. Like if you started the game as a fullback and there was another game that week, you weren't, there's no way you were starting two games in a week at a fullback. Like we don't have that under Rodgers. The players are, I don't know, like they're just getting rolled out every week. And that's maybe that speaks to depth. Maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know. And maybe that's why these guys are all pulling up with hamstrings. I don't know. Well, I mean, that, well, that's just a concern because you had Kuhn, apparently, was cramp, <clears throat> but he was clutching his hamstring. Um, and I think there was another player on the park who ended up clutching his hamstring as well. I'm trying to know who it was, though. There was another player. It was, I don't know if it was Welsh. Welsh. There was, mm-hmm. I, felt, I felt there was someone else doing it as well. And I'm like, going, we well, really can't afford <laughs> any more injuries. Like, we are like on the bones of our arse, basically. Um, we just can't afford it. And, um, mm-hmm. and like you say, if you write out the same players going back to the well time and time again, then surely that doesn't that increase the risk. Um, because we even last week against Hearts, we were 2 0 down again, playing 10, playing as 10 men, and he only made two substitutions the whole match. Um, mm. I found that quite peculiar. Why wouldn't you rotate through and, and chuck three or four players on and, and sorry, three extra subs on and just put some fresh legs on? And, and, and you know, at 2 0, are you doing something from the game? Probably highly unlikely by that point, but at least mitigate the, the, <clears throat> the the workload of your of your first line front line players but you know you, you assume that rogers knows what he's doing um so we went one nil up whoa, 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 pause, th- pause. Yep. <laughs> we assume that rogers knows what he's doing hold on um is that a safe assumption but he's been managing for a very long time sean i mean you can't and, you can't say the guy doesn't know what he's doing and also do you want to brush over and move on from the james forrest post-match comments that quickly as well we're going to come back to that because okay. we'll, we'll, we'll 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 circle around to that i know i know you, well, we'll have a discussion about that but we'll come back to that yeah. so sorry um so so we're one nil up all right cruise control i'm thinking all right just get another goal in here two nil com- comfy as before before the 20 minute mark we'll just be it's been a nice easy evening in front of the tv but stephen welsh has other ideas uh, ball breaks through um, <laughs> to Daniel Mackay in, I don't know, acres of space. I mean, like, I've never, like, I know Celtic Park's a big park ground, but far out. Like, he had, anyway, it, it, it wasn't of like space. it was an incisive move. He was just standing there. Like, he was just standing with his hand up. Like, he, what, there was nothing clever about it. No. So he has obviously Welsh's positional sense was off altogether. He was not near his man. He was not in in line with the defence. So like, or he sorry, he stepped up and and 
Steele's played them on, but you know, you try to play an offside trap where well, everyone has to step up with you. So, you know, you just look a fool when you just stand there with your hand up in the air. And Joe Hart's just stuck his arms up in the air thinking, well, it must be offside because there's no way we'd be that bad defensively. But, oh, no, apparently, yes, we were and yes, we can be. Um, so that was one each. And obviously, Celtic Park was a wee bit quiet after that. And I was sort of sitting here going, oh, is it going to be another one of these nights? And, you know, in the end up, it did end up being one of those nights. But at that point, Sean, what are you, what are you thinking? I mean, you know, obviously, the flip side to... Um, you know, Yang being unavailable because obviously suspended is that Carter Richards wasn't playing and he has made a difference. You know, the couple of games that he has played, we've looked more steady at the back. Joe Hart's looked more steady. Just everything in general has looked more comfortable. And then you take him out again, you put Stales in, sorry, um, Welsh in with Stales and we just go to absolute pandemonium. And it was just chaos. I mean, the position in there was, was, was terrible. Um, I mean, surely you've got to be tracking the runner and, and it, you know, if you, you're not playing a high enough line to catch them offside. So, I mean, you, and then, all right, AJ's out fairly wide as well. So, again, shouldn't Welsh be sort of talking to him and trying to just tighten that up a wee bit? I just, so many questions. Um, mm -hmm. But just as a defender, I'm sort of sitting there going, like, that's just such yes. a preventable goal. And it's such a simple, like, it's just, like you say, it's just a, it's just a nothing pass through. Like there's just there's no skill to it. Like it was just the, the guy had all the time in the world. Like if you, I mean, obviously I've seen it in the A League with the missed ones that easy, but but like in Scotland, like you're going to say that even a, your player playing for Livingston's going to bag it, and he, he I must admit he, he finished it really well. I mean, he, he absolutely fucking buried it. But um, but yeah, I just scratched my head, just going like, why do we do this to ourselves? So that was that was one each. Um, any any further thoughts on it? Are you just as yeah, yeah. as I am? <laughs> you're, you're um, far away. As I'd mentioned in the in the group chat, uh, in that first thirty minutes, it, it did as a spectacle of football. I'd used in uh, the metaphor. It looked like two retards trying to save a fish from drowning. Uh, the way the two teams were playing, uh, it was pretty embarrassing. Uh, if you're invested, if you're emotionally invested in it, I, I remember one time I went to see a Forest Mechanics game and the game was five each. I'm sure if you're a Forest Mechanics fan, it was a horrible day, but I really enjoyed the day. Quite an entertaining for the neutral. Uh, and I think that's kind of where we were at yesterday, the way the game was going. There was warning signs before the goal was even scored. They hit the post that was flagged offside. They had a couple of other uh, intrusions into the box that we looked a bit shaky and cleaning. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, the, the guy was just in acres of space. Now, if I'm going to make a guess, uh, so a couple of reasons, obviously, right? Welsh has got that history of, bad positioning, uh, most notably in European performances where it was like a man down, essentially. Um, if I was going to give him the benefit of doubt, he wasn't supposed to be playing, okay? Uh, CCV pulls out the day before or on the morning off. I don't know how close it was. Uh, you might also say Livingston are playing 3-4-3, a formation we're not used to facing, okay? So he's not expecting a man there. Okay, you might give him those two mitigating things, but then what you can't give him mitigation is... When, and you know yourself, when you're that far away from a player and you jump up to try and play him offside like that, that is an act of desperation. That is not a tactical move. That's why Scales isn't up with him. That's why the other defenders aren't in line with him. That's a crap, I've lost my man. I'm going to jump up and try and play him offside. And he's stuffed up. So um, I like the idea of having Welsh ahead of uh, Lager, Bielk and Navrotsky for two reasons. Uh, I've not seen much to impress me by from Navrotsky and Lagerbielk anyway, uh, or not enough to separate him from Welsh. And and if you're talking about Champions League squad planning, yeah, okay, he's player number 25 probably, but you need homegrown players for your quota, uh, otherwise you've only got 21 players or whatever. Uh, and yeah, so it, like if, if all things even, sure, go with the Scottish kids. Um, technically, he's this senior player, Amongst those, he's older than Lagerbielk and Navrotsky, so, yeah, so there's a point to be made there. But yeah, he's not been covering him. He's had a couple of good games this season, but he was he was really he was so poor at the weekends. And not to say the centre mids didn't help him either. Iwata I thought was poor uh, in possession. O'Reilly got caught, and while O'Reilly was sick, I just yeah. Other than the wingers and Alistair Johnson, nobody else stood out really for me. And yeah, as you mentioned, Welsh, poor. 
So it only took us another 10 minutes to get back in front. Uh, Dyson made it with his second goal. So it was actually a quick break from us. Bernardo breaks up the park, gets fouled. Referee plays advantage. Uh, ball finds itself to Matt O'Reilly, who has a shot, gets blocked, has another shot. And then it seems like I watched it. I didn't really notice this at the time, but I watched it back today. And the Livingston defender had about an eternity to clear the ball. And for some reason, didn't that dilly dallied on it, and that's when um, O'Reilly pinches it for the second time, gets the shot away, and then obviously the the rebound falls to Maeda, who does quite well and and run you know basically beats the two defenders to the to the goal. Um, so I mean you know fair play Maeda for following up. He's he's you know he does do that a lot, and he has actually scored some critical goals for Celtic doing that. I remember last season. Under Angie did that a couple of times. Um, and then, you know, Matt O'Reilly, you know, again, sort of just not giving up basically because, you know, his first shot was blocked, but he, he kept fighting and won the ball back and and went again. But um but yeah, two two one at that point. And then Keystone I've got written cops. down Keystone Cop from both teams. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean the, the defending was 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 poor or, you know, the... even our attacking was shambling it into the net. Like the, the, Stephen Cregan mentioned in the, the commentary it was probably an own goal. My this header was probably going wide and it comes off McGovern. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> it's sort of, um, yeah, what, what can you say? I mean, you take it. Um, and you, yeah, we were the better team. I mean, yeah, we were we were on straight in the, 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 the lion's share of the chances. Like, we looked dangerous when we were going forward, oh, like you say, because Livingston were so shambolic at the back. But, but like you say, it wasn't fluent. Um, mm-hmm. I think Rogers was very quick to say that in his post match. Like he wasn't over the first thing the performance. Yeah. yeah. And he said it was down to the quality of player that's available to him. So mm-hmm. that's, that's like a bit of a, like a bit of a, a bitch slap to some of the, um, the, the guys that came in. You know, obviously you're thinking, well, who came in? Um, well, Kuhn obviously played quite well. So obviously, you know, he's immune from that criticism to a certain degree. And, and, you know, Rogers did say that his performance was more in line with what he expected from a Celtic winger. Um, but you know, obviously, you're thinking, well, Welsh, um, would maybe be the one that's talking about that criticism, and then you're thinking, well, the other midfielders, well, you know, Bernardo, I think Bernardo didn't have a bad game, but um, but again, it was his break, breakthrough or break, break away there that you know ultimately led to the goal. So, I've got written down here at 33 minutes that there was a chance to uh, Livingston again, they broke through, and again, Welsh was trying to play the offside trap, and I, you know, I can't obviously, it wasn't offside, but obviously, we got away with it. And then obviously I brought the two Adam Eda missed chances before half time. And then Maeda nearly stores uh, when the keeper has a a bit of a flurry outside the box for about five minutes. Like I don't know what he was trying to do. <laughs> he's like chasing the chasing the winger and then he's oh, it just it was mental. It was just kind of summed up the half really. It was just like, what are we watching here? Um <laughs> but they get away with it. Um and I suppose the other one that happened in the first half was Maeda when he got the cross, the cross come shot, the one that he he got wide and he sort of hit it right mm-hmm. across the face of the goal and it sort of hit the keeper saved it, but it sort of almost went in, sort of thing. It was it was obviously a cross, but it, it nearly ended up going back in. But there were the chances that I had written down. So it it at two one, you're sort of thinking, well, it could have been two one, three one, ideally two or three nil, but you felt like we were on top. Um and you know, it was just gonna be a matter of, you know, in the end, you know, presumably how many. Um did you foresee the second half panning out the way it did, Sean? Or were you I did kinda, somewhat. You I did, did somewhat? somewhat because because Levinson were committed to their tactic, which was to go long and to go direct and that you know, to to dive. You saw that yellow card that guy got for diving at the yeah. in the penalty box. They were they were very committed to their their tactic of long throws, set pieces, and and we from the start again, didn't look like we were set up well to defend them. With the even all our players that were on the pitch, who was the biggest? Like, I mean, Ida when he was on, obviously, and then after he goes off, right? It's Welsh. Matt, uh, Matt, at that right, point. Matt yeah. yeah, exactly. So there wasn't much. We couldn't stand up to their, their physicality. And uh, there's one point where Liam Scales takes a shocking pass from Joe Hart, who yeah, and, and then like, and the boy just kind of leans on scales. Scales falls over, starts crying for a free kick, and it's like, well, maybe, but also, was it obvious? Not really. Um, I can see why it wasn't given. Yeah, we. 
I so I, I could, to be honest. I, I actually would have expected them more to come from a set piece, which was like the one that Joe Hart did save uh, with his feet. Uh, we were almost three two down at that point, uh, and that was would have been a worry. One of the stats that the commentator rolled out before the game was Livingston have never won at Celtic Park ever. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what the stat. I don't know. Was. Well, if you said it, it must be true. But yeah, I mean, you think you're sort of thinking like, oh, well, you know, you'd, they'd already break that hoodoo at some at some point, but hopefully not today. But um, was, I must have admit, Sean, I, I was comfortable enough to close my eyes at half time, and I went, I'll just forgo Neil Lennon, Marvin Bartley, and Alan Hutton, and I'll just have a wee five, ten minute refresh on that. Mm-hmm. So I put my head down, and next thing I knew, I woke up, I think it was around about 55, 60 minute mark, and we were two each. <laughs> <laughs> I went, oh, we're in a game again. Um, and obviously, I've, I've watched back the the missing minutes that I, that I missed. Um, obviously, I've watched the goal, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, and I went, oh, here we go again. So, you know, obviously the adrenaline kicks back in again and you're, you're sort of wide awake after that. But um, so much for an easy night at the office and that's when the dread of extra time because that's when the commentator said, well, maybe we'll get extra time. Well, I better not get extra time. Uh-huh. I've worked work, work, work this one. Um of course, the penalties obviously, end this game, right? Well, well, we absolutely right. And the way we hit penalties, I definitely wouldn't be back now as the penalty shootout. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, so the goal, Sean, talk us through it. Who, who's, who's to, who's to blame? Where, where I, I've got a bit of finger pointing to make, but I'll let you go first on this one. So, well, just before I put the blame on O'Reilly and Welsh, Ida and Bernardo both have guilt edge chances before that in the first five, six minutes of the second half, they've got a chance. Okay, both, yeah, okay. right. both of them have got chances to put his 3-1 up. Uh, he does is like, a, he tries to do a clever, you know, that back heel thing when the ball comes to your feet and you're six yards out. He tries to do that, completely misses it. Bernardo was just a tight angle, but through and goal, basically, and hits the side netting. Uh, and then, yeah, look, let's be honest, O'Reilly getting caught in possession. He makes the effort to get back, but that was pretty amateur getting caught in possession. Uh, there was one with Iwata against Hearts, the same thing. It makes me wonder what's going on here. It's, that's surely a mental issue. Uh, that's that's not ability. That's focus, concentration, intensity. If you're playing with intensity and, and pace, you're, that ball's gone before you're caught. Uh, and then Welsh is just absolutely flat. Um, when that when that defender uh, is plays the through ball, Got against Ying Ying, Ying I, can't, Ying, I can't remember the guy who scored, but when, when he, he plays the through ball there, uh, Welsh is not in the position he should be, his body Teti is not Yeng. the shape Teti, he should be. Teti Yengi, yeah. Teti Yengi. So, so Welsh should be splitting those players at that point, and all he's done is square up the player that's in possession. I don't know what he's thinking, and it's to me, it looks first you that it was offside. I was like, ah, oh, this is coming, yeah, this yeah, is coming back, this is offside, yeah. But it wasn't even close on the, when you see the actual replay, like the, the slow motion okay, replay. Yeah, it wasn't even yeah. close. So Levy timed it well. O'Reilly, not a defender, not feeling well. But yeah, he should be, again, his angle's poor. He should be showing the guy onto his left foot. Joe Hart's positioned in a way that suggests O'Reilly should be putting him onto his left foot as well because Joe Hart's blocking his front post, which again... If O'Reilly's given the right angle of uh, defence, that's what Joe Hart's in the right position. But yeah. O'Reilly gets ahead of the guy and he cuts back and curls it in. So I don't blame Joe Hart. I do blame mostly O'Reilly and I do also blame Welsh. Well, the other option there surely is just to take the guy out and take the yellow card. Would that not be the other? Could be red though. Was where, I'm trying where Welsh was in that situation. Or was he... Hmm. They're quite far out, but it was the last man. I, I get what you're saying, but like, uh, yeah. Um, but the, the thing is, O'Reilly hasn't really got that in his locker anyway. Like that thought wouldn't even mm-hmm. cross his mind. Um, and like you say, he's, his his defensive attributes, like that sort of like defensive style tackling and, and jockeying, isn't his strong suit. And mm-hmm. yeah, I agree. He just didn't get that right. He wasn't close enough. And then Welsh was sort of in no man's land. I can have, I agree. I kind of feel like he wasn't really sort of contributing in that situation. Um, but yeah, it's just again, it's a sore goal to lose. And I mean, great finish from the from from Yengi. I mean, like you know, he's he's rattled the top corner. I mean, did the guy some credit, but I mean, like you give guy enough space, he's going to have the ability to maybe do that. And you know, we're, we're up against the team that's bottom of the league. So you think that if he did that against a, 
a top six side or a top four side, then you know the likelihood is that they they'd store those as well. So you you really really try to buck our ideas up a bit. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. you know, two each against Livingston at about the fifty five minute mark, and I'm thinking, well, we make it hard for ourselves. And like you say, there was chances missed prior to that that you know I I didn't see myself, but you know the it just. <laughs> And goals change game, Sean. You know, ultimately, mm-hmm. you can have all the chances in the world. Like you can feel like you should be three 0 up, four 0 up, whatever. But if it's only two two each, or if it's two each, or two 0 and it becomes two each, or two one two each, then you sort of you can't feel sorry for yourself. You can't be sitting there going, "Oh, well, we should be out of sight." It's like, well, <laughs> you're not. You're in a game mm-hmm. here. And in fairness to Celtic, you know, we didn't stop. Like you know, we we sort of. The pace picked up, the substitutes came on, and I think Maesh makes a comment here. Um, where is he? Took about 10 minutes for the subs to sort of have a bit of a positive effect and kind of felt that obviously when Kyogre came on, he sort of started getting involved after about 10 minutes after he came on. And then obviously the other super sub, James Forrest, um, who I thought actually... You know, he every time he got the ball, he looked dangerous. Um, I thought that you know he he he, he used the ball reasonably well when he he got it. He just he seemed to have more control over what he was doing. It seemed more uh, deliberate. And obviously, you're coming up against a tiring team. Livingston were obviously starting to back themselves in by that point. They you know they obviously had scored the goal. There was a chance immediately after that where the the shot and Joe Hart makes the save that you mentioned, Sean. But after that, they kind of got pegged pegged back in sort of thing and, and defaulted to type. Um, what were your thoughts first on? We may as well we'll touch on James Forrest, but then we may as well touch on Brendan Rogers' comments about him as well because it all sort of ties in. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a bit, it's bizarre because it felt like until this Yang suspension, it felt like uh, James Forrest was getting Chris Common to the end of the season, uh, and then he was going to you know be rolled out onto the park for the, the last game of the season to do, say his goodbyes or whatever, um, and then all of a sudden he's back in as the the best winger at the club, which it's just bizarre because I don't think anyone's seen that this season. I think he scored two goals, maybe, and they've both been consolation goals, as far as I'm aware, uh, based on memory. Uh, so uh, I don't get this, to be honest. This, I, I think what it is is maybe Rogers trying to control the narrative. That so the narrative would be from probably Celtic fans and perhaps amplified by the media that we're so desperate, we're so poor and low in quality that we're having to play James Forrest, right? Because that's what. It, probably should have been right what was it looks Ro- like yeah yeah and rogers is then having to come out and say james forrest is the best winger at the club and and then then he has to then also contradict himself within like the next breath of uh blah 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 age etc etc um and look we all know that age is a thing that particularly gets the wingers around about 30 ryan giggs had to go play center mid uh, the same age that james forrest is at right now so it's a, it's a legit thing that does happen to wingers but for Rogers to come out and like way over the top with, with the praise. Yeah, maybe James Forrest can have a role as a 15 minute game manager for this season. But look, if we're going to go to Ibrooks and chuck James Forrest in as a start, how like I would have pretty much any other winger that we've got as a first team. I'd have I think after. if you're if you're if you're two one up with like 10 15 minutes to go and you just want somebody a wee bit clever on the ball. I would definitely bring James Forrest on. Yeah, that's what he is. Right? I think I think he's he can sort of tie, he just he's he's done he's been there, he's done it, he's got enough game management to to manage situations like that. And even you know, even if you're maybe looking for a goal with, with 10, 15 minutes to go, I still would be happy with him to come on and 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 attempt that because against a tiring defense, I think he could, he still has something to offer. Mm-hmm. At the start of a game, I just I can't see it. Why wouldn't you use your younger players and let them run at the opposition, stretch them, try and draw a booking out of them, like, you know, make them work. And then, all right, then bring, you know, bring Forrest on if, it, if the situation sort of suits it. But yeah, he went way over the top. The hyperbole was just insane. 
Um, and then, like you say, then he had to back down pretty much the very next sentence by saying, oh, well, he's, you know, he's no spring chicken. It's like, well, duh. Um, it's just, it's bizarre. But Rogers has been a bit like that this season. He's, his pressers haven't quite been as, well, obviously, Ange is Ange, but, you know, even Brendan is usually pretty good when it comes to managing the media, but he's had a few full pars this season. Um, and, uh, yeah, that one's a bit of a, a little bit of a head stretcher, but, yeah, I, I want, you know, I want Force as a, a club, use the word legend. I mean, he's he's, he's, a, yeah. he's a, he's a, he's a, yeah, he's a stalwart. He's, 100 goals, you know, 100 he's, assists, he's, all those he's, trophies. He's committed, he's committed his, his self to Celtic. Like, you can't take it away from him. Um, and I think he will contribute at some point through the rest of the season. And to be honest, I'm surprised he hasn't been off the bench in the last few weeks, to be honest, because I mean, yeah, after Kuhn's disastrous performance the time before, I'm thinking, well, God, he's got to be far down the pecking order. And I think it was probably only the fact that Yang put in a really good performance that 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 sort of maybe sort of kept kept Forrest out, sort of thing. But you know, I just sort of think, well, yeah, use him, utilize him. You know, if he's if you're gonna bring him on, bring him on and off the bench and and you know, and Paddy McLaughlin here saying, imagine if James he wanted a double. I'd Oh, I'd, yeah, that would write him into the Fort Law if he if he did, Paddy. I, I don't think anybody would would begrudge him if he did. Um, and then I think my just made a comment here, just saying, is Yangi the Aussie striker for the Young Soccerers? Yes, he is. I just had a look up. He's 20, 21 years old, and he's uh, yes, he's Australian. So happy days. Does that um his, his career is is not the kind of career that you would say <laughs> he's going to hit too high too high a uh, career with. He had he's been on loan uh, in the Finnish league for most of the last two years in Northampton Town and League Two. He's very much bounced about Finland and lower leagues in England. So I think Livingston is probably the highest level he's actually been at since he left uh, Australia. So uh, yeah, maybe maybe he is young as we'll you see. mentioned. But yeah, there's I'd time. Say. There's time. <laughs> um, so anyway, so we are um, at the 42 minute mark, so we're actually doing pretty well for time. So I guess <clears throat> all that, um, I would say huffing and puffing, like, you know, we, we started creating some chances. I wrote down a whole load of chances here before the goal came along. So second half chances, we had um, AJ smashing it off the bar, or the keeper saved it, but it was like a high, high shot. It's true. Yeah, he had a good game. them in. A Kuhn cutting in and a bit of a floating sort of shot that keeper saved. Um, they had Maeda uh, off the bar. And Matt O'Reilly a bit of a wide toe poke, and then we get the we get the goal, and that was um, a one-two with AJ and Awata. And Awata actually getting forward probably the first time I've seen him in a very forward position. But obviously by that point he realised that Livingston were camped in, so he thought he better get involved in the. The attacking phase of play and just lays a very simple slide, like you know, pass along the, the the edge of the across the edge of the goal line, and made a willing a willing taker and uh, timed his run perfectly. And I have to say, I like, made his his timing of his runs was like millimeter perfect. Like you know, they, they drew the lines for all these goals, and they were all you know, everyone was like, a, oh, they're gonna have to draw the lines. And you're thinking, well, they're gonna chalk one of these off surely, but he's he's managed to stay on side for all three of them. So you know, fair play to the guy. He gets his hat trick, and I think well deserved. His hundredth appearance for Celtic, his first hat trick for Celtic. Um, you know, it can be maligned, but I think in a team where there's no McGregor, there's no Carter Vickers, Kilder's not exactly firing in all thrusters. Um, you know, I think he's one of the ones that is standing up. I think he's keeping Palmer out of the team because I mean that's a couple of weeks now that Palmer hasn't featured. Um so you know he's 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 doing he's 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 holding up his end and he's doing his job and he took his chances like I say he probably had five or six good chances and he scored three goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was yeah it it was definitely well, uh, spoilers jumping ahead. Uh, he did get his little his little glass plaque afterwards. Uh, and it, as far as I'm aware, that's his first career hat trick ever, maybe. Mm. And uh, the other stat I heard was that there's not been a single hat trick in the the Premiership this season, and the only other that's the only the second hat trick in Scottish top uh, Scottish football uh, top flight. Like uh, the, the only previous one was in the the League Cup in June. So it, okay. there's been a real dearth of hat tricks uh, this season. It, it, it kind of happens like that sometimes. You really get a feast and famine, particularly when teams like Celtic are 
substandard having a poor year. It, it kind of dries off a little bit at that point. But, I mean, I guess I'm surprised Shanklin's not bagged any, but really, yeah. Um, if if he you know, if he was to get injured, we would be pretty cooked at the moment. Um, yeah, it's the Kyogo goal at the end was was kind of largely academic. Uh, I wonder if he even scored it with so much ease because he thought he was offside because everyone thought he was offside. It's the pressure um, off. and, and then when they go back and draw the line, it's like, I, even when they were showing the replay, I thought he was offside still, but the angle's bad because he's so close to the halfway line. So like, yeah. I get probably what they're saying. Uh, when they drew the lines, it probably was uh, just looked quite different at that point. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I actually thought Wata had a a poor game overall, to be honest, and and that kind of redeemed them a little bit at the end, because uh, it's, it's not like yeah, it's a late goal, but it's not a consolation goal. It's a it's a tie breaking goal, so I will give him a little bit of credit for that. He's the boy is a physical machine, and that's probably made the difference at that point. Uh, I think Mahesh mentioned in the comments, Liverpool, uh, Livingston, it's Liverpool. Livingston players were dead on their feet, um, and and they were, and it's it's probably part of the the, the reason uh, that. He's been able to make that run, and hey, look, we've got Livingston uh, again in two weeks' time at the Spaghetti Hat. That's one Good of too. our remaining nine league fixtures. Uh, so that's you know they could we, could we could be getting them again, and if they're as bad as they were uh, yesterday, we just need to be better. Because uh, if we're as bad as we were yesterday, then then I don't see if we might actually will maybe drop points there. So yeah, the um, I guess. 4 2. It's so, like you said, Brendan Rogers says it sounds more comfortable than it actually was because I mean, it took us to what how long before we scored the actual third goal? It was 80, yeah. 86 minutes, <clears throat> so we weren't quite in we weren't quite in 30 time, but we were we were getting there. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, you felt it was coming, but again, it's sort of like it was about half and puff, and it's like. And admittedly, you know, Rangers didn't have an easy game over in uh, Easter Road. I mean, you know, obviously the referee made it easy for them in the end, but, you know, mm. that was quite a, by all accounts, a bit of a spiteful encounter, which usually is with those two teams. Um, but you, you, when you get given a tie like that against Livingston at home, you kind of almost try to just try and do the business early doors and, you know, just, all right, that's one more one more game done, you know, but we, we just seem to be making heavy weather of every fixture at the moment and it's just one of these seasons where if we do win anything and we do get across the line it is going to be more of this <laughs> rather than being 3-0 up at half time and it just being a cakewalk like i'd be surprised if we have another day in this season where we are 3-0 up at half time and you can just go like you know we're we're, we're done because I don't even think we're capable of like going out and imagine a game if we were 3-0 up and sort of just you know if we put the t not down tools but just you know put the slippers on and just do our business and just tidy up I don't I don't actually think we are actually capable would be capable of doing that anyway I think we'd have to go out and strap away and well we and, did that against you know. Dundee but I was flashing the power well we drew was... we drew one each in the second half I mean yeah I mean the game is done I mean obviously there's no way they were coming back from that but that's been the exception, Sean. That's definitely not been the rule. Mm -hmm. And obviously, as we we go with the split, presumably you're playing the better teams again. Um, I just can't see us having another another game where we're. It's just I just say it's just going to be an absolute. You know, it's just going to be an absolute bum fight for us the season. Um, which I'm, I'm up yeah. for. It. I mean, if that's what it takes, and we win the lead, then it makes it all the sweeter, and that's great. And you know. We're not entitled to win anything by you know big margins, but we just don't do ourselves many favors sometimes. And this season's been one of these seasons where we haven't, you know, we've let ourselves down time and time again. And coughing up easy goals like we did last night is prime example. And yeah, you know, it comes back to squads, comes back to you know players there. You know, Welsh. There was an offer there from from Syria. He could have went in summer. No, we kept him. Signed two centre halves. One can't get a look in at all in Liger Bielka. And then the other one is perennially injured. And then obviously CCV's had his issues as well. So, you know, you as much we criticize Stales and yeah, he's not the you know, I'd be very surprised if he's just starting centre half next season, but 
he's the only one that's managed to stay fit all year. Basically, mm-hmm. he's not missed a game. Yeah. So and, I mean, and you mentioned. There, he's... Sorry. All right, Carol. Yeah. Please. No, no. I was just going to say you mentioned the 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 fixtures uh, there after the split, and I was I was looking kind of. Uh, I know I shouldn't, but I was looking ahead, right? And our next two games are St. Johnson and Levy. So they are yeah. both like bottom three teams, right? Or bottom four. Uh, yeah. Aberdeen included. Uh, so that's that's and then after that, the the seven games left are all against top six teams. So like no matter what. Um should be playing Sevco home and away, St. Marin home and away. Uh Hart should be coming to Glasgow. We should be going to Kilmarnock and we should be going uh, and then it's one of Hib Dundee or Motherwell for the yeah. final game. Uh, to be honest, uh, I'd prefer Dundee out of those three <laughs> uh, yeah. based on how we've done this season. Not so great against Hibs and Motherwell. Maesh is asking, do we know when Hatati is back? I think that's the $64,000 question, Maesh. But also at the same time, what are we expecting of Hatati when he does come back? Because he's barely kicked the ball all season. So, I mean, it's yeah. a pretty, it's a pretty big sort of thing. You say, all right, just come in and, and just play centre mid for us, and like you know, win is the league. Um, yeah, he's gonna have to be drip fed back in if he does come back. When he comes back, if he comes back. But I mean, he'd be a, he'd be a lovely player to have back in your in your team selection, in your team rotation. But you know, there doesn't seem to be any 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 word. I guess well, this international it, break will be the the make or break. I think you think. Yeah, assuming he doesn't play this weekend, there's there's Livingston away, and then it's Ibrooks. So, yeah, after the internationals. Yeah. So that's yeah. you're you're not going to make too many. You wouldn't be expecting to make too many unenforced changes, uh, in, in, in after the international break. So Mesh is making the case for Palmer to come back in. He says he has to start despite the inconsistency. I guess the problem with that is you bring Palmer back in, then you're forcing Maeda onto the right, and Maeda's definitely a better player on the left. I mean, the mm-hmm. other option is to play Palmer on the right, because I mean, Palmer is right-footed, but for whatever reason, he always plays on the left. So, um, Yeah, he's just one of those cutting-in players. That's just, yeah, it's Amu, 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 Amu El Yunusi, he was the same. Um, but, mm-hmm. yeah, again, I, I, I'm, you're sort of... I mean, Maeda had a good game, so I can sort of say why you wouldn't take him off. And if Palmer can only play left left wing, and Maeda's having a good game, well, that's tough to ease, isn't it? You can't, you don't, you don't get on. But um, I guess you, to your point, Sean, about the sixty thirty under end, it's like, well, it's a squad game as well, and we've got to try and rotate through our players. But you can only do that when you're winning, or not only when you're winning, but it's easier when you are, you know, three one up as opposed to two each. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of takes the, the pressure off a little bit. And all right, if somebody's having, if somebody comes on and doesn't quite hit the heights, well, it's not the end of the world. But at two each, you, Rogers is looking at going, well, Major scored two goals. He's looking good. He's absolutely tearing um, the, the, the fullback apart. And you know he's like the Duracell bunny. You know you know he's he's capable of, um, of going for 90 minutes. Other battery brands are available, um, so yeah. So, um, so I, yeah, I, I, I just think there's. I don't think it's something Rogers has got right a lot this season with the substitutions. There has been times where he's it's been a masterstroke, and obviously bringing Adam Eda on and, and him scoring the two goals. Um, again, I'm useless when it comes to the game, what games these are, but I've spoken about them at length when they happen. But um, he has gone right a few a few times, but then there's other times where the, the subs have been largely ineffectual when you notice the, the the performance of the team actually dropping off a cliff when the substitutions are made. So you sort of think, well, it's not really making the team any stronger. Whereas Mo Man sort of made the point that we're Rangers, at least they've not got much quality to begin with. So when they bring players on, it's kind of like for like, it's all very much for muchness, but they're more about just being a bit of a cohesive sort of unit and, and seemingly more of a sum of the parts rather than actually having you know world beaters in the team and the fact that John Lundstrom's possibly their player of the year just makes you shudder. But um but anyway. more, more's the point they're keeping clean sheets and we're not well so. and and but 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 Butlin's obviously doing a job for them as well. And I'll be very surprised if someone doesn't come in and offer some money for him in the summer. But mm-hmm. we're going to get there first. And enough about those people. Yeah. Um yeah. <laughs> like, like I said uh, I've said it in the past, and it's sad that it's now relevant again that we're being challenged and when we should have been out of sight. 
Uh, I've always said defences win the league, and I don't think their defence is any great shake, but they are, as you mentioned, but with Butland there and the referees on their side, they are keeping clean sheets. Whereas in our last eight games, we've had one clean sheet. So that's that. <laughs> It's just not good enough. Like it's any, not. I was not. It's not. It's not. I mean, we're t- we're coughing up goals, our friend Senna. Um, yeah. Neil Warwick, any thoughts on that, Sean? Any, any Aberdeen <sighs> bastard case? <Well. laughs> it's embarrassing. It's 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 uh, yeah. It makes it like people talk about appointing your under your B team coaches like uh, Naismith and Robson has been Tim Pot. Well, there's there's the the other side of that argument, right? Uh, if you go and get a big name like Neil Warnock and he comes up here for an absolute laugh, does piss all of note apart from embarrass himself in the media uh, and just leaves. Because let's be honest, I'm sure he wasn't enjoying Aberdeen and I don't think Aberdeen were enjoying him. So uh, yeah, it was uh, the Joey Barton of managers appointment. <laughs> yeah. That's not bad. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what the two cup wins, I think were his only real results of note, I think. Um and after that, it was all, yeah, and Aberdeen are in danger. Like, so they only need someone to come mm-hmm. and stay the ship. Is Neil Lennon that man, Sean? <laughs> uh, I was thinking more Robbie Nielsen. I don't know what he's up to. That's well, I suppose, I mean, that's, that's not a bad show. I mean, he, he did all right. I don't like, I don't particularly like his cut of his jib, but... Um, yeah, he's he's probably the other one that's unav- uh, that is available. Sorry if I should say he's, he's out of a job mm-hmm. at the moment. Michael yeah, like, the job, but uh, yeah, I mean, who who else would you say Derek McInnes? But they're not going to go back to that well. So no. that, that's uh, another one would be Stephen Robinson. Uh, Has Jack Ross been at Aberdeen? Because he kind of went through the merry-go-round nah. of season I've been there. No, nah, I think kind of, like, dropped up a cliff. I think his reputation's done. I think he's going to pop done. up at Dunfermline or something in the future. Yeah, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Well, Sean, um, or well, man of the match, may as well get that. Done and dusted. I think we're both just going to go with Dizemeda. Would that yep. be a fair, fair shout? Dizemeda, I, yep. I think he deserved it this week. Honorable mention to Kuhn, who yeah, would have yeah. got it if the goals had been spread around. I mean, yeah, I, I said it definitely. It's a, it's a glimmer of what he's potentially capable of. And obviously, we've got plenty of years to see what uh, Kuhn's capable of. And, you know, I never, I try not to Five get and too. A half. <laughs> too excited because um players take time and Celtic tend to sign young players and just it takes time for them to settle in I mean Nevada was a bit of an exception like he sort of hit the ground running at 19 and and it's obviously very sad that he's left and you know he actually penned a very touching Instagram post whether he wrote it himself or he got somebody to write it for him but it was still you know he, he hit all he hit all the right notes and thanked all the right people and and um but yeah, but you know that's that's the exception. That, that just doesn't happen all the time, and sometimes players just take six months to settle. And unfortunately, when you're in a title race, you kind of need players to settle straight away. But you know, we just very rarely does that actually happen. But I just try and sort of say, well, all right, look for the positives, and all right, if, you know, it's a very dire performance. All right, well, they they go out the team and they go back to training, and I'm sure they come back in again when the manager thinks that they're. They're ready, and you hope that the next time they come in, they they, they play a bit better. It happened with Yang. Um, it's now happened with Kuhn. So, you know, we just, like I said, we just have to find a way of extracting performances from these players between now and the end of the season and just juggling them, like mm-hmm. I said, horses for courses. But plenty of uh, cut and thrust still to go. Nine league games to go. St. Johnson on the weekend. Who are we getting in the cup? I'm going to say... Morton, because <laughs> my <laughs> young cousin, um, Ryan Mullen, is in goals, used to play for Celtic, uh, B team. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. so he's actually he's, he's signed a new contract with, with Morton this season, so we're with him next season. Um, and yeah, he's actually playing first team football, and he was part of their um 15 16 game unbeaten run, which was their record as a club. So um, he's had a big part to play in that. So I'm hoping that he does well tonight because they've got hearts at Capelo. So, um, so yeah, so hopefully he um, pulls off a clean sheet and gets them I, through. I, I agree we are getting hearts or Morton because uh, with Aberdeen managerless and their captain suspended for the semi-final, the, the Sevco and Aberdeen balls will be going in the freezer before the draw. 
so they're being someone's sweaty palms. They know like who the hot ones are, the cold ones are. But um, it, yeah. But, but yeah, John Beaton did uh, did whoever's playing Aberdeen a favour by uh, giving Shinny a yellow card for 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 remonstrating after a yeah. pretty bad tackle. But that's that's not like John Beaton, is it, Sean? No, not at all. Uh, we've just ticked over the hour mark. Um, it has been awesome since you were on, Sean. Any TV movies? June Any Part Two. Oh, I see June Part Two. It? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, good. It's, uh, uh, it loses like in the, in the way you would expect a book to movie translation. Like it should be a TV series, really, but you're not going to get the scale and grandeur and the score from a TV series as much as you are from a movie. So you have to give up something, right? Uh, so they do lose a bit of the nuance and the the slow burning development that you get from the book, but it's still really good. It's still really well done. Still enjoyed it. Yeah, I need to just see it because I only watched the part one like a couple of weeks ago. So I was like, oh, well, I, was, I thought I watched that before part two, but um, I'm, I'm pretty busy this weekend. My parents are coming up here, so I had a chance to see it this weekend. So it might need to be next next week. I'll try and get to the cinema and watch that. It's going to be a movie in, actual, to the movies in ages. Like, a, mm-hmm. And it feels like it's one of those movies that you should watch on a big screen. Like it kind of lends itself it to the is, cinematography yeah. and that. Yeah, even um, just like the, the sound, if nothing else. I've watched the uh, <clears throat> the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix in the weekend. It was rubbish. The only <laughs> redeeming feature was Ollie Beerman, who was 18 years old, who came in for a, an appendicectomy-affected uh, callous signs, so he couldn't race because his appendix mm. was about to burst. So that was the only thing, interesting thing about the whole race. Um, and whether Christian Horner hangs on till Melbourne, in two weeks' time, is anyone's guess? Um, Twitter, one day he's safe, next minute he's getting sacked. We will see, time will tell. Um, Paddy McLaughlin's just saying that he's booked his fifth birthday with his boy on the semi final weekend. Well, happy birthday to your son when it comes around. Hopefully, you'll be seeing Celtic again in the final. And it's Sean, thing. it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on, mate. Um, it's been good to have a chat. It's been a while. Um, yeah. And uh, if you, I say this every week, but if you are watching today, it was 71 of you, it was a bit of a peak for us live. Please like the episodes or the the, the video um, and leave a comment. I always read them and I uh, appreciate your feedback. Um, and yeah, and like I said, um, really great to have you all on board. We'll be back again next week to review the St. Johnson game. Um, Paul will be back from his holidays, I believe. Uh, Richard should be back as well. Um, so we, we might have three of us on. You never know. I'll be here anyway, so we'll work it out. Um, and Sean, you're welcome back anytime you like, mate. But um, I'm already standing away, standing between you and your marking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so all that is left to say, guys, is hell. Uh, that's that. Hell, hell. Hell, hell. <laughs>